time I was dancing at sub 8 a.m. So <laughs> I, I appreciate that a lot. Um, as the intro slide, hold on, let me, as the intro slide showed, um, I do think that gaining spiritual knowledge always feels good. And I know that every week, Reverend Cheryl and all the other speakers, everyone who makes the service possible, you know, get up and do our very best to, to try to share knowledge and some inspiration and whatnot. And one of the things, um, if y'all really knew my background, it, it still makes me laugh after all of these years of study that I am going to be a minister in just a few months because I fled from everything that had to do with my childhood religion. Um, but one of the things that so draws me to unity <clears throat> is that we don't do dogma, but we do have like kind of a shared language and a, and a, and a core set of teachings. And probably at the heart of that are our five principles. And I've been asked to have some slides. So pray for my technology here. I'm going to share slides. Can y'all see that? Woohoo. I'm probably not telling you anything you don't already know, but I'm going to review quickly. Our five principles are number one, that God, source, creator, whatever you call it, is absolutely everywhere, absolutely good. It's present in and through everything. Two is that human beings have a spark of that divinity within us. We are extensions or expressions of God. And here I would have to say, I believe that all beings are such, and um, I actually think that this superhuman-centric worldview is another manifestation of separation consciousness, and I know for sure part of my ministry is um, bringing a more eco-centric view into, um, into unity and hopefully the, the world. The third uh, principle is what Charles Fillmore, one of the founders of Unity, called mind action, and it's that we create our experiences through our thinking. The fourth is that prayer is not beseeching to some out there entity, but it's actually coming into alignment, and it's a super high caliber level of mind activity. And then the fifth one is the main point of my talk today, and our fifth principle is action that it isn't enough to just know all these spiritual truths. We need to put them into action in our own lives. And I am going to strongly suggest out in this world um, to make our biggest contribution to the greater good. Now, in my experience so far with unity, there seems to be quite a bit of maybe not confusion, but a diff differing opinions on what this whole concept of spiritual action is all about. So is it enough to have a daily meditation and prayer practice? Um, is marching in the streets for a cause you care about? Is that spiritual action? And my answer to that is maybe and maybe. And I'm actually finding that it's it's been powerful to um work a little bit with or play a little bit catch myself there i'm trying to say a lot more playing at things instead of working at things to play a little bit with the nuances related to um spiritual action that's been powerful for me there is indeed interaction and then there's also powerful action that we can take and i think especially our unity and new thought movement, and I'm going to come back around to that, I think we have a powerful force um, role to play in helping to create a world that works better for all beings. I'm going to share a few stories, um, and the first relate to the inner spiritual action. I don't think anybody would argue that a regular practice of prayer and meditation is powerful, positive spiritual action. I have been finding, however, the real power is when we can take that meditative, intentional approach off the meditation mat and into the messy everyday life. 
Um, that's where the, the rubber hits the road. Um, living from a spiritual action principle is as much about being as it is about doing. And I'll, and I'll give you an example. My mom is elderly now and is having a number of challenges, um, including attitudinal and mental challenges. And I'm her executor. Um, and she's had kind of a series of crises lately. And I am not the most patient person in the world. And she can be quite challenging. And you know, I was in, I realized a, a few weeks ago dealing with one of these kind of episodes with her and she lives half a country, a big country away from me. Um, and I, I got off the phone and I didn't feel very good. I was doing everything necessary. I was helping her navigate the various challenges with, you know, the medicines and all of this, but I was being a jerk about it. You know, I was doing good work, but I was being an unloving jerk. And that is that an impatient, unloving jerk. And that's the truth. And so that enabled me to realize I was not in, um, uh, let me go actually out of just realizing, let me go out of screen sharing. Good. You guys can help keep me on track with my slides. Um, it gave me a chance to clean up my attitude. And what I'm realizing is we know when we're in aligned spiritual action by how it feels. If it feels good, we're there. If it doesn't, we're not. And as simple as that sounds, for me at least, that doesn't necessarily make it easy. Um, and I'll, I'll give you another story along these lines. Several years ago, as I was really getting deep with these unity teachings and I was really getting hooked with a course in miracles which is one of my main spiritual squeezes and I was doing this exercise of of, of viewing everyone I came across as a Christ and I th this was working really well at, at the gym I work out kind of like a maniac and I tend to I tend to do cardio in between my weightlifting sets so this day I'm in the gym and I'm in this great headspace and I'm jogging on the BOSU ball and I'm looking over here and it's like her Christ you betcha them beautiful divine beings you betcha and then up the stairs into the weight room comes this guy who had said unkind things and actually lied about me when I was running for elected office that's the sound of a kumbaya moment coming to a screeching halt because you know it's like Christ him well, no, that, you know, that is a road, that was a road too far. And, you know, I immediately realized how I was being, you know, that scene in the movie Forrest Gump. Have you guys seen the, the, that movie? Some of you, the scene where Jenny is about to get on the bus with her abusive activist boyfriend and Tom Hanks as Forrest Gump just gives him the stink eye. I know a hundred percent. That's what I did to that guy that day. And he turned and ran away. No, he didn't. He didn't turn and run away. But I would have loved it at that point if he had. <laughs> I wasn't that powerful, but I I would have loved that. Then I went from Christ to that so fast. It, it was it was shocking. And the best I could do that day was just a somewhat genuine hello. And to be completely transparent, even as I was doing that, it was with an air of aren't I great because I can take the higher road. You know, it's subtle, right? So I will say after, I don't know, weeks or months, I did begin to be able to see a spark of divinity in him. And the thing that was so powerful about that, the moment I was able to genuinely start doing that, any attachment I had to the past, to the stuff that happened just dissipated. It was like this little piece of, of, baggage that I just no longer needed to carry. So spiritual interaction. Are we are we walking our talk, applying these five principles, these ways of being, the affirmations that were shown, lovely affirmations. I would actually like to get that 
one on power from absolute word. Um, are we are we putting them into action when it's easy in our lives? Are we able to put them into action when we're facing financial strain, health issues, when we're dealing with people who are not behaving at the level of the essence of who they are, difficult people? I think that's the real that's the real gold. That's that's for me where I'm beginning to realize the more I can do that and the more I the more able I am becoming to have that the more able I am to have that be my default, the fewer of those difficult challenging situations and people I'm I'm attracting, I'm interacting with. So I think it's also important um to apply those principles to ourselves. So I'll come back to the situation with my mom. One of the challenges with her is that she's had a lot of hearing loss now. And dealing with her on the phone has been very, very challenging. And so I finally just told her, mom, when I when she calls or when I go, mom, you got your hearing aids in? I'm not going to talk to you until you have your hearing aids in. And now she just automatically does that. And it has really, really helped the whole situation. She's less frustrated. I'm less frustrated. So um, I think often we can see the divinity uh, and the inherent goodness in others even a little more easily than we can see them in ourselves. So I wanted to, I wanted to share that. And then one other piece, you know, I'm someone who wants to change the course of humanity and save the planet and change the entire freaking global capitalist economic system. Uh, but I think it's important, especially for those of us who have some illusions of grandeur, to realize that there's power in demonstrating spiritual principle all the time. And I'll give an example of that. In my local congregation, there is a woman who has been a long, long time member. She's been a member since before um, I even became involved. She serves on my local earth care team. Several years ago, we were at a workshop together and it was a super dark, stormy, rainy night here in central Oregon. And um, the power flicked in the building that we were in. And sirens started going by really close and a bunch of them, like first responders, ambulances, fire trucks, whatever. And this person, we had to stop, the, the presenter had to stop because you couldn't hear her anyway. And this person, I, I looked over at her and she had just gone into quiet prayer, not saying anything, just silence and kind of, but you could feel that she was sending intent to the situation. And I thought that was so beautiful and i have started doing that in my own life so she just her demonstrating that principle right there changed my life in a in a beautiful and empowered way i'm going to show you so ellen devonport let me do share screen again in her fairly seminal book the five principles Um, she had, she outlined this wonderful checklist that's kind of like a way to, before we take action to get prepared, ask ourselves, do I affirm divine intelligence and love in this situation? Do I remember my own divinity and that of all the others involved? Do I take responsibility for attracting this situation into my experience and know that it's outcome for me? will match my thoughts and feelings about it? And have I aligned myself with God, the universe, the good, and received guidance before I act? I think that is powerful and profound. And as I was preparing this talk and dealing with stuff with my mom, I was like, you know, we do, we wind up teaching what we need to learn, I think. So this was very, very useful to me. So, I have a feeling looking at some of the people uh, in this meeting that there's a whole lot of spiritual principle already being lived and demonstrated from this group. Part of my mission 
with my ministry and being part of unity is to put burrs under the saddle pad to get more of us taking our action off the meditation mat and out into our world. To say that we are living in interesting times is pretty well, is a pretty significant understatement. I mean, if you, if we, it's easy to kind of look at what's going on in our world and just be like, it is bat bleep crazy out there. I think our movement, unity and all new thought movement, we have a powerful role to play right now. And I want to, I want to share, um, something uh, um, that's profound for me, given what I've been through with media and with news. It's important to know that, the, that, that what, what we call news, like on corporate mainstream, the kind of news we typically see on TV, that is intentionally designed to only cover what they deem is newsworthy, which are crises which are challenges, which are things that aren't the norm. They don't cover all the amazing, beautiful goodness that's going on. There are, there are evidences of this planet healing uh, in many, many places. Pe right now, people helping animals, animals helping people, good things being done. You have to be very intentional, actually, to find those, those things. And one of my own um practices for staying optimistic as a lifelong activist and advocate and staying balanced is to ba I'm, and I'm a news junkie for sure but to balance out that kind of more mainstream news with some positive media sources and I want to share something this is on my um this is on the website for The Rethink. It's just therethink.org with links to some of these. These are just some of the more independent news sources. Yes, Magazine has been around a long time. It's fantastic. Happy Eco News, that actually pops into your email and it gives examples of positive things that have been happening. And I'll tell you, we have started at my local, just an idea for y'all, at my local um, Unity, we do a celebrations thing where we go around and share what people want to celebrate. And we've started wrapping that up with an eco celebration, with an example of a positive thing that's happening in the planet. And it really has had a wonderful, um, wonderful reception. Then Transcend, I would love for you guys to go and check out Transcend. It's a publication that I do on a, on a, on a platform called Substack. And this is a, that's a space where I blend my environment and economic transformation work and my spiritual work. I don't really separate those. Um, so I just, I think it's important and empowering to be intentional about where we do get our news and to, and to bring some of those positive examples in, especially because as unity practitioners, we all know that what we focus on increases so that's a that is an aspect uh i would argue of, of spiritual um action now i want to share another little story the year was 1968 i was one astronauts bill anders frank bowman and jim lovell were in the apollo 8 spacecraft and that was the first crewed spacecraft, I say crude, not manned, because we now have women doing this too, but crude spacecraft um, that was going to circumnavigate the moon. And Anders later noted <clears throat> that his team was kind of irritated with his focus on getting photographs. He had brought some equipment and getting, getting pictures and whatnot. And the whole main point, they thought, was to get pictures of the moon. But when they got up there this image appeared this is an iconic image and it's called earthrise and it was the first time that we had had that humanity had had an image of our gorgeous little blue green marble floating in space and i want to just read you um, a couple of things 
that that um, the 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 astronaut said. This is a quote. To see the earth as it truly is, <clears throat> small and blue in that eternal silence where it floats, to see riders on the earth together, brothers on that bright loveliness in the eternal cold, brothers who now know they are truly brothers. This little blue marble in the midst of all that darkness, at least for an instant, people looked upon themselves as citizens of the earth. I think that's awesome. This image stirred a revolution in awareness. This is where the story of spaceship Earth, you've probably heard, that's where that first came up, that, that new addition even to our language and our imagery. It was a, a deeper realization that we are all connected and that this Earth is precious, rare, and maybe even fragile. I believe we're in another similar inflection point, a similar shift in consciousness because humanity is realizing for the first time that we have, we as a species collectively have reached a scale that is actually um, a geologic force. We are, we are actually doing tremendous damage collectively to this planet that is our home and that so many of us love. And it's very, very, it's a very profound realization if you think about it, in all the time that humanity has been around, it's only been the last handful of years where we have realized and admitted that we are doing that level of damage. There's profound hope in that, in that, in that recognition. Um, there's pain in it for sure as well. And there's hope. There's hope for the kind of shift that, that we need to, to see happen. And I, I, I just encourage everyone to step into this inflection point in whatever way you can, whatever way feels good in your own circle, your own sphere of influence. You know, Jesus was not a pacifist. He was an activist. He was, he was, I would, I would say Gandhi was not a pacifist in the sense of just sitting back and not being engaged in worldly affairs, not taking on the things that were broken in their wor world. You know, they spoke truth to power, engaged in civil disobedience, um, and they wound up, they overturned moneylenders uh, tables, and they wound up changing systems and changing consciousness. And I truly believe we are now at a point where that is what we're all everyone here right now is here in a really precious and precarious time and the systems that that at least seemed to serve us well for a long time are clearly now doing a lot of damage and this is a time of societal redesign and i think folks like us folks who who are, are gaining skill in spiritual practice and principle, especially new thought practice and principle, we have a real role to play. Um, I, the other piece of this as an activist, you know, the, the, the Einstein um, quote or adage that you can't change the level of thinking, you can't solve the problem with the same level of thinking that created it. That's often what's happening in activist movements. It, they also are about, you know, the war, the war against poverty, the battle for climate change. It's an us versus them sort of mentality. And I am pretty involved in a number of interfaith um, environment and climate actions, and they're gaining increasing power on the national and global stage in, in these efforts to change the way that humanity interacts with ourselves and the rest of nature. And they're, they have a, a, they, we have a really powerful role to play with that because we can also bring a shift in consciousness to the way that activist work is handled. Um, Mother Teresa once said something along the lines of, um, I was once asked why I don't participate in anti-war demonstrations. And she said, I will never do that. But if you, but if you set up a pro-peace, a pro-peace rally, I'll be there. 
right? And I know this is subtle because the truth is we absolutely must quickly evolve beyond fossil fuel. And I believe we absolutely must hold big oil and that whole that whole milieu accountable. But it but but it really hasn't been working to vilify them. It's easy to, it's easy for me to, but it hasn't been working. We're not going in the right direction yet on these issues. I believe that at the core of environmental and social justice issues, the core of those movements is about love. And I think our unity and new thought movement can engage in spiritual action, our fifth principle, in a way that helps the entire movement to heal this planet and the insanity of humanity, to do that in a more loving and, and empowered way. I want to show, um, hopefully it will work. This is like a minute and a half video clip. And if some of you, if some of you attended my um, interview on Spirit Cafe, you may have seen this already, but I have a little bit of a personal mission to encourage people to watch the documentary called The Year Earth Changed. And this is the trailer for it. And please give me a thumbs up if you can hear sound here in a second. Yes. March 2020. A deadly virus sweeps around the world. Overnight, our lives are put on pause. WHO declared a pandemic. Issuing a stay home, stay safe order. Directing all of our residents to quite simply stay at home. But as we stop, remarkable things start to change in the natural world. With the clear skies, for the first time in a lifetime, we can see the Himalayas. With beaches closed to humans, these animals were nesting at a more successful rate than we've ever seen. One localizing and then the other. I'd never heard that before. From the start of lockdown across five continents, we have recorded a global experiment of epic proportion that has shown us if we choose, we can transform the health of the planet. I always get moved when I watch that and I don't know how many times I've seen it now because I show it a lot in these kinds of talks. I so encourage you all to check out the documentary. It's been out a while. It was on Apple TV. I'm not sure now, but it's the year Earth changed. Um, it's not quite an hour long. And what it shows is that is how resilient Earth can be and how how quickly she can heal if we change some of our some of our behaviors and practices. And it was mentioned earlier. Um, I focus my the bulk of my work on trying to make trying to raise awareness about the need to make the shift path beyond a limitless growth consumer based economy. And I do that because at, as that film shows, that's really what's driving so much of this disconnect and so much of this damage. And I'm thrilled to announce just earlier this week, um, I, I was selected by the Parliament of World Religions this coming fall to present on that topic. Um, and again, this is usually a relatively new topic, even in our unity and new thought movement, uh, it, like to question the paradigm of the current system that we're in. Um, that I think is a powerful form of spiritual action that everybody on in this session right now can, can be part of. It's just speaking truth to power. And, you know, we're good at questioning old beliefs, right? It's part of what new thought does. So I just think that questioning whether or not these systems that we are all um, caught in, 
that that are that are the operating systems for our society those need to shift and i think even just powerfully and lovingly asking those questions um is important i believe we're here for a reason and part of that reason is to take our meditation and our positive mind action off the mat and into the messiness of our world right now i believe that is how we can we can shift the complete trajectory of where we're going. I will show you um, one more slide. This is how I define spiritual activism. It is the fusion of deep spiritual knowledge and principle, discipline in our inner world with wise, radical action for positive change in our outer world. The world is hurting, we all know that, and everyone here is called to be a sacred activist, to be a healer. We, we are the ones that we've been waiting for, right? We're it. So I just would invite you all to to, to find even, I know you're all doing good, but this is a time to do more good. And I just appreciate you listening to me. Peace out. So I believe I have been asked also to share um, a bit of meditation. Is this the time? Perfect. I would invite everyone to bring your attention into the holy instant of right now, the present moment where all of life is played, to center in to your deepest desire for a world that works better for all beings. And just feel where that sits in our body. And I invite you to do some imagineering. And whatever the issue that you are most concerned with in this world, Just imagine if we're wildly successful in actually solving that issue, in making the whole condition better, what that might look like and feel like. Maybe it's knowing that the planet is indeed healing that we've reversed trajectory on climate change, that humanity has stepped up collectively to end all hunger and everyone has enough, that all children are loved and cared for. Whatever that issue is that moves you, in a, in a few moments of silence, let's just Imagine that issue righted, lovingly solved. Let's demonstrate and, and, and pull on right now unity's spiritual power of imagination.
And as we bring attention back to the sacred space that is this circle we've created across distance through technology, we bring back with us the knowing that we can be part of evolving humanity into a restorative force on this planet. And when you're ready, open your eyes. And I am complete.